Rita and I met up with Summer Soul and her skipper Bruce in Napier. For the next couple of days we were busy helping to get her ready for the 1100 mile passage to Tonga. Our fourth crew member John joined us and we left Napier on a fine late autumn morning. We expected to motor for the first day or so due to a big high over the country. The sea state was very smooth, making for an easy introduction to shipboard life. During the afternoon we were visited by a pod of dolphins. Later on we also came across a seal basking in the water. The full moon during our first night at sea glistened on the water, making the night watches quite enjoyable. Before the dawn produced its own spectacular light show. We saw quite a few albatross. Finally we found some wind and were able to sail. That was our routine for the next four days and nights as we headed northwest to avoid a low forming over the Kermadex. Eventually, we encountered a southwesterly wind, which allowed us to sail directly to Tonga. Water was now warmer and we started to encounter flying fish. We were also visited by a flock of swallows as well as a finch. This was quite surprising as we are over 500 miles from the nearest land. While most of the birds moved on after a while, unfortunately a few of them died. Probably not surprising since it was lying feet up. Swift day of a funeral. Yes. So they were consigned to the deep with the appropriate formalities. One day blended into the next as we made our way steadily northwards. It was now considerably warmer than back in New Zealand. We did a bit of fishing, but without success. The 
time passed quickly as there were always things to do. Either on the helm, at the navigation station, in the galley, or simply relaxing. After 10 days at sea, we reached South Minerva Reef. We anchored inside the lagoon in 17 metres of water. The next morning, we explored the reef by dinghy. <laughs> It felt a bit strange to be a stepping ashore with no land in sight. The highest elevation was probably only about 10 centimetres above sea level. There was a wide variety of corals and marine creatures living in the shallows, some of which were very colourful. While these were very interesting from above, they were spectacular when viewed from underwater. The clarity of the water, with its many different shades of blue, was also impressive. Walking further, we came across the remains of a boat that had been wrecked on the reef, a reminder that this is a wild and unforgiving place. We came across a deeper pool amongst the coral, so we did some snorkeling. Eventually, we had to head back to the boat and head onwards to North Minerva Reef. North Minerva is only about 20 miles from South Minerva, but has a distinctly different character. Some of us went for a snorkel from the boat, but they soon came back due to a close encounter with a shark. So we explored the reef and the shallow waters around it by dinghy. Here the wildlife was not so abundant, but the colour and clarity of the water was still impressive. We left North Minerva the next morning on the last leg of our journey to Tonga, a passage of 250 miles. A strong southerly further south produced a building swell and we were anxious to keep ahead of it.
The next morning we sighted land, the first in 15 days at sea. This was the island of Tongatapu, the biggest island in the southern Tongan group. After negotiating the reef, we approached Nuka Alofa, the main town and entry port of Tongatapu. We tied up at the quarantine berth and spent the afternoon waiting for and dealing with various customs officials before being cleared to land. The next day, with the boat safely moored in Nuka Alofa Harbour, Rita and I hired a taxi and visited the main attractions around Tongatapu. Our first stop was the place where Captain Cook landed when he visited Tonga in 1773. We passed quite a few cemeteries, all of which were very colourfully decorated. The next stop was Ha'amanga Maui, sometimes called Tonga's Stonehenge. The alignment of the stones seems to have astronomical significance. The next stop was Anahulu Cave. There was an underground pool in which we swam. Back above ground, we passed a recently installed solar power generation unit and through a couple of villages. before stopping at the Mapuavea blowholes. Then it was time to head to a local resort for lunch. This resort, Liku Alofa, had a great view and also a wonderful menu. After lunch, we visited the site of Abel Tasman's landing in 1643, checked out a tree full of flying foxes, and visited the fruit and vegetable market back in Nuka Alofa, followed by another wonderful meal of local fish. The next morning we headed to the airport and were on our way home. The ocean below looked very peaceful during our short and routine three hour flight, a marked contrast to our 15 day sailing adventure. Personally, I'd prefer to do it the slow way. <laughs>